Rouge. Yeah, so Hell is here. Bohemian Rhapsody, what a song. It's a very heavily requested Pentatonix reaction, so here we are. Bohemian Rhapsody has got to be one of the most famous songs in the world. It's a song that's inherently quite strange in terms of structure, in terms of subject matter, in terms of musicality. If you explained it to someone in whatever way you might, it probably wouldn't sound like an appealing song. Yet, everyone knows it. It's a relatively long song, everyone knows every word, there's no repetition of verses or choruses. So that says something about it, it's iconic. The lyrics themselves, I mean, I mean, there are a million and one interpretations out there. We each probably have our own interpretation, to be honest. So I won't I won't go into that side of things. So seeing this as a request is not surprising. I'm not surprised that Pentatonix have chosen to cover it. Although I hadn't even seen a thumbnail or anything of the Pentatonix version before today. I've never come across it. So I've got it ready to go here and I'm quite surprised to see that they're not in some kind of outfit. There are a number of iconic moments in the original song and I'm starting to enjoy this game of trying to guess who's singing which part before I hear it because I'll probably be very wrong and therefore surprised which is always fun. I was having a think though just before this about two parts in particular. Bobby. That has to be Mitch, right? Surely, surely that has to be Mitch. And then the other moment is just after that. I'm imagining Scott here, especially in terms of Tombra. Although this is quite high, so I guess it depends what key um, Pentatonix choose to do this in. Okay, Freddie Mercury. One of the best, most unique voices I think I've ever had the privilege of hearing. In terms of range, again, this song would probably be mostly suited for Mitch or, of course, Kirsty. Yeah, I mean, I'm beyond excited to see what they do here. There's so much opportunity with this song. Even if they just transcribed the original song into voices as well as they could, it would still be a mad arrangement because of how the song is intrinsically. Freddie Mercury, famously said, do whatever you want with my music, just don't make it boring. Let's see if Pentatonix honour this. Is this the real lie? Is this just fantasy? Caught in a landslide, no escape from reality. Open your eyes, look up to the skies and see. I'm just a poor boy, I need no sympathy. Cause I'm easy come, easy go, little high, little low. Any way the wind blows, doesn't really matter. Wow, wow. I mean, it's great, isn't it? It's fairly long, six minutes, so I'm gonna try and do it in three two-minute segments. So let, let's go over these first two minutes. If you don't want to hear the musical analysis, skip to the timestamp here. All right, so first things first, the key, they are performing in a slightly lower key, which I think makes sense. It will just make it a bit more manageable to sing in general. So instead of the original key, which is this chord, every note just moves down two, so it becomes, I like how on the word landslide there's more of a sliding gesture than in the original. A landslide, no 
one. I always thought this was a great opportunity in the original song for there to be a glissando, a slide through the notes. Landslide. Then we get Avi's entry, which is cool because they've decided to keep it five part a cappella without complications. Open your eyes. The original song opens a cappella just as pentatonics have, obviously, but then at this point, an arpeggiated piano comes in. Avi is just sustaining one note. On the next line, look up to the skies. Pentatonics make a small adjustment here, but it really changes the sound, at least it really sticks out to me. Look up to the skies and... Cue future so hairless again to explain on the piano. So the melody will be my left hand, Kirsty will be my right hand. The melody... and Kirsty played together. In the original version, which I'll play transposed into pentatonics' key, we don't get this harmony. Kirsty's part, the equivalent, just stays on the same note, so the melody comes and meets it, so it sounds like this. So in this opening, pentatonics are representing the lyrics much more literally. Sliding down on landslide, going higher on look up to the skies. Right, I can't go into as much detail on absolutely everything. This is a fairly long song. We'll be here all day. So I'll just try and focus on the bits that stood out to me the most. Kevin. It's cool to see Kevin having more of a singing part in this when there's no beats. Obviously, their voices have been treated a little bit to make it sound more similar to the original. But Kevin's voice, I say it every time I hear it, it's just the type of voice that blends so well with all the other voices. So it's a huge asset here in this particular section of the song. And sorry, I, I had to listen to that again, but moving the sound from the left ear to the right ear. It's so eerie, if you'll pardon the pun. But yeah, it, it kind of makes me shudder that. And we also hear multi-tracking in the background in very, very small, quick intervals with loads of other voices to create this like laggy echo effect. Then we get this section, lovely arpeggiated accompaniment. Dun, dun, dun. They've stayed true to the original here, and the benefit of doing this a cappella is the bass part. Avi can sustain the note in the bass. If we compare it to the piano part in the original, where the left hand is removed because you have to play the top notes with your left hand. So the bass note with time will always become quieter, even with the pedal. If you're interested to see or hear the parts that pentatonics are doing for this section, I'll do a transcription once I finish filming and put it in now. So then we get this part here on Throne It All Away. The sad lyrics, it's like a sinking symbology. We've got a lot of chromatic movement downwards, so moving down step by step. But now I've got a throne it all away. Scott's part there is not in the original, they've added it in. It's this extra chromatic part in addition to the bass to really kind of enhance this feeling. Scott's part there is... And as usual, the arrangement is very clever. I mean, that's to be expected now, right? It's the little things. I feel that this song is so iconic and structurally diverse within itself that it's maybe a bit risky to change it up too much. But little things, such as some parallel movement in the bit I'm about to play, which just means that parts are moving exactly up and down with each other. Normally, you'd have one part kind of staying whilst another part moves in order to better fit with the harmony around. But listen out for these two chords. <laughs> just a bit of a unique sound that stands out. Back in Bach's day, you couldn't do this in music, so maybe that's why it stands out to me. And then again, on Kevin singing, he comes in for these bum-bums. And I was gonna say it's him on the top note of the first chord there, who's singing But I've just listened to it a couple times more, and to be honest, this again, this is quite tricky. Because I think Kevin is also doing the second note, the to me, that sounds like Kevin's voice on both of those notes. But also, Avi is up in there. I mean, this is my first time hearing it. I'm not going to spend more time going into it, but it's good moments like this. It just shows, again, how, how tight they are, especially in these softer, more delicate moments. It's a great sign when you can't really distinguish whose voice is whose that easily. All right, let's carry on.
up and two of a man Got a moosh, got a moosh, will you do the fandango? Put your toes in lightning, very, very frightening me Galileo, 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 Figaro Magnifico I'm just a poor boy, nobody loves me He's just a poor boy from a poor family Spelling his life from this monstrosity Easy come, easy go, will you let me go? Bismillah, no, we will not let you go Let him go Bismillah, we will not let you go Let him go Bismillah, we will not let you go Let him go We'll not let you go Let him go We'll not let you go Yes. <laughs> what is that? I mean, wow. And yes, I thought Kirsty was going to do the high note, but she brought up Mitch. Yes. Well, I never use this word, but this is, it, it's an epic performance, I think. I think there's justification to use that word here. I mean, so much, like, oh, there's just so much. All right, let, let's go back over those last two and a half minutes or so. My time has come. Oh, don't be sad, Mitch. So here there's a fairly significant change in this arrangement versus the original song. Aching all the time. They could have done a lot more here, but to be fair, the craziness does come just later on. But it's still just some variety, but we can call this more of a relaxed variety for now. Right, so this part... Mama, in the original contains the single standout moment for me. Don't ask me why this is, because I don't know. And I wish what I'm talking about wasn't standout, because it's so, well, unimportant, kind of. I'll play that part in the original, and it's a vocal line going ooh, ooh, ooh in the background. The notes are these. So listen out for that. Mama, because that's just always what just sticks out to me. I don't know why. I was very curious to see if they'd keep that in their arrangement, but they didn't. If they did keep it in, it would sound like this. Mama, However, the notes are actually still in there, but they're just sung different rhythms and with words. That's the thing with acapella. You're limited to just the voices you have and in turn the number of parts that can be heard at any one time. And that's why you always hear me say that I think arranging is an art. Seeing what you can change to keep other parts that you otherwise couldn't include by changing their rhythms or applying them to someone else. And then of course, I love how Avi gets the anyway, the wind blows line. Sorry, where can I find this instrument? What is it, a Mitch tar? Sorry, I couldn't think of any good puns for Mitch and guitar. Grassy, gra grassy tar? I apologize. But wow, incredible. I'd love to know how that sounds without the megaphone effect. H have people heard this live? I mean, his vibrato and his tone just sound identical to a guitar. And here too. Blimey indeed. All right, and then we get this section, which, you know, it's just madness. There's so much to talk about, as you can imagine, so let me just try it and go rapid fire with some of the cool bits. One, Avi's transition from higher register down to the murky depths below. Two, the choreography. Nobody loves me. It's so fun and clever because it's crude, if I can say that. Just five people with torches, it's almost just quite silly, but it's so good. And it's obviously a nice homage to the original, you know, with this famous image that I'm sure we're all familiar with. Now, you might be shocked to discover that I wasn't knocking about in 1975 when Bohemian Rhapsody was released, but my understanding is that music videos weren't really a thing back then. So, you know, this is even more iconic. And just a quick fun tidbit on music videos whilst we're here. My first Pentatonix reaction was to Video Killed the Radio Star. If you haven't seen one of my Pentatonix journey begun with that please do check it out the card for that will be up here and i just think that's quite funny because that original songs video was the first music video to be shown on mtv in the us i think in 1981 okay back to here number three avi again bismillah that low bass will you let me go bismillah. number four we get another great example to hear kevin let him go. i mean that's fairly high that's an f and then of course yes Mitch. If it wasn't Mitch singing that, I think I would delete my YouTube channel. I like how Kirsty brings him up, especially for it as well. It's like overly obvious. Well, all right, let's carry on. I mean, at this point, this is definitely, I think, going to be my new longest video. But anyway, all right, let's go. Let's go to the end.
Well, I mean, yeah, that yeah, uh, epic. I'm I'm just gonna stick with that word, epic. That'll be one of the few times you'll probably hear me say it. I mean, let's let's just go through that that last third then. Again, just quite a lot to talk about. So just from where we carried on, we have this bit which seems like this big crazy moment. <laughs> It's not actually though, it's just the guitar and bass playing the same thing. Let me find it here in the original. Obviously quite percussion heavy. So here we have the guitar and the bass, Scott and Avi. But then Pentatonix have also added in a bit more to thicken the texture, but not too much. It's static ooze. Sorry, static O's. They've thickened the texture, but they've chosen for the most simple way of doing it, just adding in some static notes. They could have been harmonizing with Scott or Avi on those guitar runs. Again, it's this idea of adding in a bit to make it your own, but not too much. And then we get this part with Scott singing. So you think you can stop me in spit in my eye. Not gonna lie, I'm a little bit surprised he is actually singing it because I didn't expect to be right. And I don't like it when I get these predictions right because there's gonna be someone who's like, oh, you knew already. That part there, it's just Scott. I thought Bohemian Rhapsody, Pentatonix, Mitch for the high note, Scott for this part. Then we get the nice little yeah. 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 Very instrumental sounding, Avi's part there especially. All right, and then we have this part and there's one part in particular where the notes are this. And of all the pentatonics I've heard, this is reaction number 24, by the way, this is probably the most difficult to say who's singing this part. Oh, to come at it logically, based on the other parts, that part should be Mitch, because he's the voice left over after you consider all the other parts. But that doesn't sound like Mitch at all, it just sounds like Scott. To add further confusion, whilst the higher part, harmoning with that, does sound like Kirsty, it could also be Mitch, because we know that their voices can be indistinguishable at certain times. So my take is that it's either Scott's voice, which they've used because this is a studio recording and you should use whatever voice is best for that part, or it's Mitch with a whole new type of voice that I've just not seen before from him. I like things like this, it keeps you thinking and wondering how the arrangements were all put together and stuff. Once I finish filming this and I listen to this probably on repeat for two, three days, I'm sure I'll make up my mind a bit better. And then of course we get this great na 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 section. <laughs> There are a lot of modulations or key changes here that are much more difficult to do vocally than they are with an instrument. An instrument, you just play the note and then that note will sound. Vocals have a phase before the sound is made and that is the phase of subjectivity. The sound will only be what the mind thinks the sound should be and that isn't always right. So it's much more difficult to get these accurate. Then my earlier question about Mitch making the guitar sound without the megaphone is answered. <laughs> And then this lovely ending, eh? And nice video as well. This idea that despite all the hardships spoken about in the song, they're all still here now together as like one unit, a family. And then here we get the swooning ooze and then the nice crash clash chord on the R. Nothing really matters. Nothing really matters. Which is like one last fake resolution and then we get the actual end. Ah, everything has reset. Like the whole story that we've just witnessed was kind of a dream. Chromatics are an important feature again, especially in Avi, just moving down step by step. And then on the last line, Anyway the Wind Blows, we hear Kevin chromatically harmonising above Mitch. Anyway the wind. Just super quietly. Anyway the wind. Well, there we go, Bohemian Rhapsody, Pentatonix. Yeah, amazing. To revisit my Freddie quotation from the beginning, Freddie Mercury famously said, do whatever you want with my music, just don't make it boring. I think Pentatonix honored it. I can see why this one won the members poll of which Pentatonix reaction to do next. All right, let's leave it there. As always, thank you very, very much for watching. Would appreciate a like, subscribe, and if you enjoy my content and want to support me and join the community, you can do so by joining the Patreon or YouTube memberships linked below, and I will see you next time.